finally lost our minders here in Xinjiang and I've arrived at the Urumqi Bazaar. So the mosque is behind me and this is the big bazaar, apparently full of food, drink and a lot of fun stuff. So let's take a look. Off we go. Bye bye. Bye bye. That is a massive naan bread. That's massive. They call it naan, long. So for, for British people, I guess for Indians as well, uh, naan is like that Indian bread thing. But they, hi. 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 Are you from Xinjiang? This is Xinjiang, Ramah. So a lot of people are here, like, on, like me, on holiday. Huh? Yes, you are. So the naan, so the big bread thing here in Xinjiang, very, very popular. But they're different from the naan breads that British people, Indian people associate with eat associate with I don't associate with bread wow now this smells amazing these like huge bagels down there and some bread it smells absolutely beautiful let me turn the camera around this this is the kind of nuns I'm talking about this is beautiful That was great that. So I got some chili naans and then this big peanut one there. All total price seven seven RMB. So what's that? About a pound, a dollar fifty or something? Ridiculously cheap. And I asked the guy, I said, um, is Urumqi expensive? And he says, Yeah, it is, compared to the countryside. He's come up from the countryside to learn how to make these uh, these, these sort of naan breads. Um, but yeah, very impressed, very friendly, lovely not young guy. Um, yeah, I feel, for some reason, I feel a little bit nervous walking around here, as though I'm expecting trouble, but I don't, I, there isn't that feeling, I've brought that feeling to the, to the party, there isn't that, I suppose it's because we've been so looked after, um, that, that finally I've been allowed out, and wondering what all the fuss is about, um, but it, so far, it just seems like a normal Chinese city, the biggest difference is, people look like the Xinjiang people, like the Uyghurs. But actually in every Chinese city you get Uyghur people, literally every Chinese city, um, mainly restaurant business, selling lovely Uyghur foods. Um, so that's the biggest difference. So you can see there's less hand faces, you know, the Han Chinese people here, although there are still a lot of Han Chinese people here. And the other thing is a lot more mosques. So there's a mosque over there, and that looks like a mosque as well. So I guess that's the biggest difference. But it's to be expected, isn't it? You've got a, got a lot of Muslims here, so you'd have a lot of mosques. Um, so far, so good. I'm very happy with my seven quiet purchase. There's the mosque. The Second Bridge Mosque. That's the translation, I think. Um, I'm not going to go in there. I've been to mosques before. I've been to plenty of mosques, but I'm not sure. Actually, the few mosques I've been to, I've been allowed to film in, but I'm not going to go in there to pray. I'm not a Muslim, so um, we could do a mosque video another time. Instead, I want to go around this place and have a look, because so far I've had a really great time in Xinjiang, but it's been very, very organised. So finally, and I'll tell you the reason, it's quite funny actually, finally we've got a bit of time to ourselves, and the reason is our flight has been delayed today, so this was not on the original itinerary. Here we go, let me turn the camera around and show you, what is this, pomegranate town, fruit bazaar, exciting. What's interesting is, so we've, I've only done, I'll just finish this up. So this, uh, the bazaar is, for me at least, up to now, it's just been one long street. I think there are other streets off this street, but it's been one long street. And uh, remember, this is the first time we've really been left off the hook here in, in uh, Orangey. And there is security both in and out. So fairly standard. So if you go to any sort of Chinese metro system, including in Chengdu, you've got to go through security. And in this street, it's run through. So your bag goes through the security thing and you sort of pat it down. Yeah. You couldn't find beer? But that doesn't, that doesn't mean I won't be able to find it this time. With the nose your size, I should be able to sniff it out. You know <laughs> I've got I mean? a big nose as well, I should be able to sniff it out. But people in Xinjiang do drink beer, right? Of course. Well, of course, that's where Wusu originated, was uh, in Xinjiang Autonomous Region. Wusu is Wusu beer in is, Xinjiang beer. Well, it's the best Chinese beer made. Uh, mass produced, you'd say. Mass produced, yeah. yeah. But, but, you don't like Qingdao? 
No. No, Tingdo, Tingdo is my least favorite. No way. Have you tried snow? Have you tried snow beer? Snow beer is pretty bad. Yeah, snow beer is the worst by far. By the way, if snow beer wants to sponsor any of my videos, I take that back. Uh, but if they don't, I believe it to be they, the worst they, mass-produced they, beer in China. They, they, can't, they can't sponsor alcohol. Oh, but you're not on YouTube. I am on YouTube. I'm just very, I'm not very bad at YouTube. I'm oh, just okay. very bad because at YouTube. Like, they, but they, 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 you, they, you can't get alcohol sponsored on YouTube? No, that's against the rules. So they'll yeah. shut your channel down. You do that. Uh, yeah, well, to, I think um, Grillo's point is I'm mainly on Douyin. I'm trying to get big on YouTube. So if you haven't already liked, subscribe, please do so. But yeah, on Douyin, I've had alcohol adverts. Well, before we, I've had before a few, we're over, actually. we should do a video together because uh, a lot of times when you get uh, into a video promoted by uh, a larger YouTube channel, it, yeah. it bolsters your, your, Ooh, your, can we do your that? subscribers. Why not? Wonderful. I'll do that. We'll, we'll, uh, but this is the end of the little bizarre bit. If you go outside, then you got to come back through security. Oh, let's but, not do that. But they may not have beer here, but they'd have beer right across the street. Do you want to go for a beer? I don't know. I think if you don't have much time and you want to see a bit of Urumqi and coming to the bazaar, is a good idea because you get to see everything in terms of food in one place although it's quite touristy so if you had more time the bazaar would just be one stop on a many you know on a full itinerary that's nice that looks like a nice fish there um, on, a, on, a, on a full itinerary but um, because I don't really have that much time as I said we've been let out on the loose um, I think it's actually quite a good idea to come here Hello? Oh, you found your beer. He found his beer. Grillo found his beer. Um, but yeah, it's all very compact all together, and that's probably a good idea. Um, but yeah, how can I put this? It's all packaged and very nice, but it's like going to the mall or a shopping centre and seeing all the Xinjiang foods here. It's a great time saver, but I don't know how authentic it is. And yet, it's Xinjiang locals selling Xinjiang products. So that's authentic, right? Real out on the beer. Finally got a beer. We found it. Um, I want to have a chat with Real I want to sit down. Got some videos to upload. I have a beer in the bazaar. Rumchi. This is Wusu. This is the Sinja beer. I was really pleased with this purchase, but this is. Listen to this. This is rock hard. Look at that. That's my peanut. He told me it was soft in the middle. I was really. I was really impressed. <laughs> With this purchase, and it's it's not very hard. Well, the, <laughs> they, they, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He, he just don't, doesn't know how to shop. Exactly. This was, but honestly, look at it. I was so happy. Seven RMB, seven pie. Yeah. All this. But, uh, but, but honestly, as Guido just said, I think I bought a weapon. There goes the phone. There goes the phone. You can tell how hard it is. <laughs> I'll have a peanut. I've uh, ditched those breads. They were awful. Cheap, but awful. I suppose you get what you pay for. What was just interesting, although I held the phone up that way, sort of vertically, so it's not really great for YouTube, although I might put it in the video somehow, I'll find a way of doing it. I was just walking out there for a wonder, as tonight has been really, just a wonder. And uh, some kids sort of approached me, sort of said hello, and we had a bit of a chat. They were very interesting cars. Wanted to know if I had had a Rolls Royce or had seen a Rolls Royce and um, told me what their favourite cars were and we sort of talked about England. And they must have been sort of eight, nine, ten years old. Very, very friendly. Uh, it was nice. Uh, they could tell somehow that I wasn't a local Uyghur. Um, you may think it's funny to say that, but honestly, the Uyghur people here, it's very obvious that they're not Han Chinese. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, you just look very different. I, I suppose they're Turkic peoples. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I believe they're Turkic people. So, uh, yeah, they do look a bit different. And I thought, when coming here, a few friends actually said, you're going to be mistaken for, uh, for a Uyghur. I've not been mistaken for Uyghur people. Um, yeah, but uh, so they spotted me instantly. We had a bit of a chat. It was interesting. It's going to make a really good Douyin and or TikTok. All in Chinese, of course. They spoke perfect, they spoke perfect Chinese. And actually, a note on that, and hopefully this isn't true, because it'd be a bit of a shame if it is true. Apparently... Um, uh, the Uyghur language is not used at all in schools. It's everything is in Mandarin Chinese. Now I understand teaching Mandarin Chinese and having everything in Mandarin Chinese, 
that having a Uyghur class I think would be quite a good idea uh, but apparently that's not the case in most of Xinjiang but I'm sure they speak it at home anyway the point being they spoke perfect perfect Mandarin far better than my Mandarin and so we were able to communicate um, whatever you think about policies through this country the, the idea of Mandarin this principle of everyone speaking one language is absolutely brilliant and is made for a better country in my opinion you know um, if you go to other countries India, for example, you know, every little place have different languages. The use of Hindi and probably English, especially, is really, really important for different areas to talk to each other. Previously, before Mandarin was widespread as it is now, honestly, people from different provinces, Yaksimus, uh, people from different provinces couldn't communicate with each other. But now, through Mandarin Chinese, people can. That, I believe, is a good thing. Anyway, guys, the, it's, uh, the sun's gone down. It's dark now. Um, and I'm about to meet up, have some food. So for this video from me, Toby in China, aka Mr. Wang, Mr. Wang's Great Adventure, and this is a bit of an adventure for me, guys. That's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do so. Really want to try and grow this channel. But from me, Toby, Mr. Wang, in Urumqi, in Xinjiang, in China, of course, say Jian, hosh, hosh, the weekend, I believe.